It's very often the case, I think, that actually, if you've got a serious problem, that tackling it head on is not the right way to go. I remember Sidney Brenner giving a talk about the sequence of the amber codon. This was a chain termination codon, a brilliant piece of work. And being amazed at the sort of the, how trivial the evidence appeared in view of the sort of profundity of the discovery that was made. And I thought that was very odd because I thought that, you know, sort of great discoveries required great experiments. They don't. Often great discoveries involve little tiny facts that if properly understood, you realize that that completely changes the way you think about the world. Theodore Bovary. I love a, I found a quote from him saying, you know, that he liked it when a, a single tiny fact can illuminate a whole area hitherto dark. You know? And it's very often like that. Certain things are incredibly variable, but then there's one thing right at the center which is absolutely the same in all. And then you know that's the only thing that really matters, right? <laughs> it's very important in science that you you keep on having a perspective, I would say, because it's, it happens very often that people focus on one specific problem, they are very expert in that, but somehow they can like, get stuck in a corner and don't understand what's around. It takes all sorts to solve scientific problems. It helps to come at them from different angles, I think. Go to those lectures, go to meetings, uh, getting in, uh, interact with others. Because sometimes they can give you ideas or uh, views on your uh, results that you missed before. To me that's very important. As a scientist, I think that should be the main thing. You shouldn't focus just on your research. The meetings are really important. You can get good ideas from going to meetings and talking to people. And I like talking to people. And I ran into this guy here who it turned out was the professor of medicine at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine. He and I just shared this common interest in how heme controlled globin synthesis. I took a sabbatical as a graduate student and went and worked in New York for about four months in the summer of 1966. And I really liked chatting to uh, Irving and we were really interested in this. And when I did a postdoc, I went back again to, uh, to his lab. You have to be interested and keen on learning more. And um, yeah, you need to have a certain drive. Meeting important people go out for congresses. This was really an inspiration. John Gurdon always said you should move lab every 10 years. Having different colleagues, you know, both immediate and around you is, is interesting and stimulating. You do tend to get into a rut if all you know is where you've always been. This is the point that takes you further, that is how to advance your research. So, uh, you know, I have no idea where the path is going to lead next. True discovery is when you find things that n people certainly didn't expect, people might even have said was quite impossible. You've got to think hard and you've got to work hard, but you've always got to be tremendously skeptical and always on the lookout for interesting new things that you hadn't expected and don't quite make sense and have the courage to go and follow them.